All right, lads, so in less than 12 hours time, we are going to get the Inheritance Summon rerun. In this case, another chance to get Thousand Year Blood War, Round 14, Ichigo, and also Rukia. Still some of the most sought of characters in the game. While it's true, some of them have kind of fallen off just a tad bit. I mean, they've been out for almost three years, right? Two and a half years at this point. They're still great characters to have, and they're still perfectly usable, and still some of the best in what they want to do. You know, if you're looking to play IC with an Arang Killer, Rukia probably is still the best for that. And if you're looking for a booster for the Captain Gear Quest, and even sometimes the Sorry for Guild Quest, Ichigo is a great character for that too. So while it's true these characters are starting to show their age just a tad bit, they're still great characters to have really, because for the most part they haven't really been replaced in what they want to do. Having said that though, these two characters are going to be the main reason why you are summoning on this banner. Lucky for us, the first step is going to be free, so of course we're going to have a video up tomorrow doing the free summon. Good time whenever we get a free thousand year blood war multi, and for the most part, that's all you should be doing. Maybe if you really want the characters, do the second step, the second discount, but I really don't advise going further than that, because what you will see is that the banner is available tomorrow morning and will be lasting until the 5th. We still know while this banner is out, we're going to be getting the Okura rerun banner, that might interest you. Have no idea what the fillers are going to be, though that should be here within the next week. And then, of course, on the 27th, we also have the end of month banner announcement. We have no idea what that's going to bring, but what we do know is that it is going to come with a new gauge character. And as of right now, gauge characters have been some of the best characters in the game, period. So you might want to at least wait until the 27th to see what end of month is going to be. As always, the benefit of a banner like this releasing so late into the month is that you get to wait and see what the end of month banner is going to be before you decide to summon on these particular characters characters. Just in the potential chance that end of month brings one of your favorite characters, it is advised as always you just wait to see what that is going to be. Having said that, this banner this time around really isn't that good, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda getting tired of seeing the same faces over and over again. If you've recently pulled on any Thousand Year Blood War banner, you probably have the entire banner here, maybe besides Rookie and Ichigo. And unfortunately with these particular fillers, I wouldn't recommend again everyone really go past step two. The banner itself, like these characters are outdated. Sure, Thousand Year Blood characters at this point until we start getting more new ones, they are collector characters. They're still perfectly usable, like content hasn't gotten that hard where these characters are unusable. And I know everyone loves Thousand Year Blood, or well, myself included. These are still some of the more fun characters to play around with, especially if you never really had a chance to play with them, right? I understand why you might want to summon on a banner like this, but I really think we should just be waiting until we get better valued fillers. And it's kind of funny because these are some of the more newer Thousand Year Blood War characters, and by that, we're still not seeing round one one, two, three, or four get put into fillers yet, and I was really surprised to not see round four as fillers in this particular banner. I really feel like if those cards were in this particular banner, it would add more value because they're resurrectable, they're potentially good links, and unironically, some of them have more value. Ichigo, for example, the heart one, is actually really good in guild quest, and if you don't have a booster character, he's actually a decent sub to shoot. So unfortunately, just due to the nature of the fillers of cards that we just keep seeing over and over again, I would kind of advise most people to kind of skip this banner, and again, just continue to wait for new Faust and your Blood with characters, and as of right now, it looks like that's next going to happen for July 31st, when the second part of the 8th anniversary rolls around. I think the only two characters that are really worth talking about is, of course, going to be Daddy Ichigo and Mummy Rukia. Those are the two main, and if you're going for them, good luck, right? Because I know people still want them. Just a quick TLDR for these characters. Ichigo, Mind Sorry Killer, Boost SA2, Great Set of Strong Attacks. His problem is that he doesn't think that he stats him with. That's basically holding him back from being used in Inheritance Charles, for example. But in Guild Quest, he has a lot of usability there, mainly due to the fact that he does have Marauder, and he also does have a Sorry Butt and Captain Killer. So technically, due to his Boost SA2 and two killers, you can use him four times a guild quest, and in guild quest, he's instantly always going to use his SA2, which is then 960 in front of him, and that's actually really good for syncing up with your soul bump if you're trying to go for a very fast run. He is replaceable with other characters that have the booster skill, but if you're trying to be really sweating, go for like the max possible score, having Daddy Ichigo in your account is going to be really good. Rukia is one of the most fun to play characters in the game, period. I still love playing with this character, and she's still my go-to character whenever I'm going against Technica Rankas. She's actually aged really well, many due to a Bankai button, which allows her to go into Bankai, and when you are in that Bankai form, which does last 20 seconds, the first 10 seconds, you have an increased chance to inflict status elements. So that makes her really good for inheritance trials, and that's why she's gotten better over time. Still a really good amount of damage, still has good killers, that being a Ronka and also Sparta, and if you lack a good Sparta killer, 
Manny's attack with the Guild Quest, she's a good cheese character for that because she basically constantly inflicts freeze. Yamamoto issues a technique, no affiliation killer. That's really about it. Nothing super special. Chojuro is a hot captain killer. Might have a usage there. Maybe you're lacking in captain killers. Makes for a decent lead, but definitely is easily replaceable if you get any new recent captain killer. Izuru is a ranged holo killer. He's an attack based character, so he does most of the damage from his normal attacks. Unfortunately, he does like guard break, mainly only going to be used in the ranged holo guild quest. Tanjiro, of course, still holds up. Great set of range, great set of strong attacks. Unfortunately, damage output is lacking a tad bit, but definitely still usable by all means. Kirio, not really that good. Has a boost SA2, mainly going to be used in the ranged story big guild quest if you lack any other character there. And maybe in Senken when you're going to get a usage out of her. Not really the greatest character in this selection. Senjumaru, once more very similar to Rukia, kind of aged quite well here. In her case, she is a hot Aranka killer with an increased chance to inflict star elements against any mind Aranka. So she's good in IT because she constantly inflicts star elements. Is held back by the fact that SA2 is a bad it can't inflict star elements, and at the same time as Soul Bomb, she does not have devastation, so a Soul Bomb really isn't the best. There are way better carries out there right now, but if you are still a massive Senji Mara fan and you want to get a use out of your potential favorite character, she's still perfectly usable when there are Aranka enemies. And then Zombie Toshiro, Mind Aranka Killer, just decent at best. Again, the banner itself really isn't anything too great. Fillers are kind of holding him back here. Not because, like, they're bad by any means. It's just because we keep seeing the same faces over and over again. The main reason why you are going to be summoning is for Ichigo and Rukia. They're still worth summoning for, but maybe not on this particular banner. But as mentioned, lucky for us, the first step is going to be free. So maybe some of you lads are going to walk away with Ichigo and Rukia on the first free step. I'm sure it's going to happen. And you can comment on my video tomorrow when we do the free summons, letting me know that you just got super lucky. Since the first step is free, your next step is going to cost 200 orbs and I would kind of recommend it again if you're trying to if you're missing the whole banner if you've never pulled in a thousand in your bottle banner doing the discounted second step with the first free multi really isn't the worst thing to do especially if you get a new character on the free step since you're getting orbs back for the most part but I wouldn't recommend anyone really go past that unless you're a massive fan of a certain character in the selection then you gotta do what you gotta do of course every fifth step is going to guarantee you a featured character and even if you are really tempted to summon on this banner to go to the guarantee like I mentioned probably just wait to see where end of month is going to be first before you do decide to summon as already and i'm going to mention it a lot as of right now because we are getting closer and closer as the days do go by we are getting close to the eighth anniversary that will be happening july 23rd and that remember does include two parts so the second part will be happening at the end of the month july 31st so there's two banners probably the, some of the best characters of the entire year are going to be released in that week so it's very advised you have a lot of orbs saved up for that and at the same time very likely that end of month or mid month of june is going to give us burn the witch swimsuit characters that's still speculation but burn the witch is still scheduled to come eventually and if they do what they did with round three that being the Christmas banner, they're going to drop without any build-up besides the original announcement. So we have no idea when that next round of Burn the Witch is going to come out until it literally comes out into the game. And if that does come out in June, they're going to be some of the better characters. They're going to be some of the rarer characters in the game. And that's three big banners that you have to pull on over the course of basically two months. So it's times like now where it's advised you start saving your orbs up for those really tough free-to-play periods. Because there's going to be a lot of banners, a lot of bait banners, and banners like this, maybe you should be chilling out on. With that said, though, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time. Take care and peace.